Hey guys, today we are making our way out of Long Prabang town. We plan on going to see what is said to be the most beautiful waterfall in Asia, which is the Kuangsi Falls. We are going to hop on our bike and drive all the way up there and it should take about an hour to reach. We heard that it does get quite crowded once, it are, once it's about 10 o'clock, so we will try to reach there before 8 when it opens and hopefully we can beat the crowds. The Kuangsi Falls have quickly become one of the most popular places to see in Lao. They are located about 30 kilometers south of Lang Prabang and it is quite popular to make a day trip to the falls. While driving to the falls, you first drive through some tough and dusty roads. But once you're through them, you get to see the beautiful countryside around Luang Prabang. You'll cross a lot of paddy fields as well as tiny villages on the route, and even some temples. Just beware of the potholes and you'll be just fine. We have just stopped on the side of the road because we saw some rice farmers planting some rice. And this is one of the reasons why we absolutely love renting a bike. Because you really get to stop anywhere and see so much more culture and really get a feeling for the place. So like now we just saw them and we were able to just stop straight away and then you can watch, you can take pictures and you get so much freedom just by having a bike. But after that really nice bike journey, uh, we have made it to Kuangsi Falls and we are probably the first ones here and I'm now headed to see if we can get some tickets at this time we have reached here before it actually opens it opens at 8 but I think we still have about 10 minutes to go so we'll see if we can buy some tickets thankfully we did manage to get in early from the ticket center you get into a golf cart that drops you off at the entrance to the falls the ride lasts for about 10 minutes before you reach the main waterfall you can choose to either take an easy dirt trail along a stream with dozens of smaller waterfalls and swimming holes or you could do the steeper hike straight to the falls, which we did. At the end of the trail is the main 60 meter waterfall. It was just amazing. as well that if you come with a scooter then it's a 5,000 kip parking fee as well that you need to add. The one interesting question you might have is why is this water so blue? Uh, we found out that the reason for this is because it flows across rocks that are made from limestone and these limestone particles reflect sunlight and this causes this specific turquoise blue color which is actually like very very stunning to look at it almost doesn't look real you feel like you're almost in a movie just to the right of the main falls is a steep hike that leads all the way up to the top of the waterfall you hike up through a forest and this takes about 15 minutes it is quite slippery so take care especially when coming back down. We have made it to the top of the waterfall after a another hike, a short hike. That was not very short. It's quite slippery, they're not really real steps. So be prepared to walk with like hiking boots or something maybe. But it is beautiful up here. At the top of this waterfall, there are few tourists around. All you will hear is crystal clear water flowing down the rock faces. 
we also happened upon a pleasant surprise. So while walking around the top of the waterfall, we have come across this man who has made a boat and he said that he can take us to the source of the waterfall for 10,000 kip per person, which is pretty cheap. And it looks like an interesting ride almost into the swamps. So we are going to try out the boat. The ride to the source took about 15 minutes through this partially submerged forest. The water was very clear and you could see fish as well as the roots of the trees in it. While the bottom of the falls was starting to get quite crowded at this point, a pier was absolutely calm and peaceful. We just got off the boat and the man showed us the source of the waterfall. The waterfall actually comes from down this cave. It doesn't look very deep, but he said it's actually 45 meters all the way down. So you are not allowed to swim there or go diving there, but you can definitely take photos. And then the other parts of the waterfall are not as deep. They're about a meter down. So then you can see people swimming in different areas. So yeah, it's quite interesting to look at the source of the waterfall. That boat trip was so nice. We had no idea that you can actually take a boat once you go all the way up top. Because we have seen people swimming uh, in these waterfalls. But this boat trip also in a way makes it better. Like you get to go a bit inside and see where it comes from. Which is very cool I think. Towards the bottom of the waterfalls there is actually a non-profit Free the Bears organization here, so we're gonna walk through and see what it's like. We heard that the bears here are rescued from bile farms and protected from illegal wildlife trade. However, the bear rescue wasn't exactly what we expected, and it seemed to be more of a zoo. The enclosure that the bears are in is actually quite small. For a Free the Bears place, this looks exactly like a zoo, so I'm not sure how you are freeing any bear here because they're all basically in these really small little enclosed areas and I'm pretty sure now it's time for them to hibernate because it's getting really cold but they have nowhere to go indoors it's all outdoors, there's no caves, there's no like indoor area for them at all and like right here there's just tourists like who are walking past screaming, shouting and the bears are like maybe two meters away from where the tourists are walking maybe even closer I don't get how you're helping any bears when you're just putting them there to be shouted at and just disturbed 24-7 basically. Safe to say there are certainly better aspects to the waterfalls. We walked along the dirt trails a little more. Having both grown up close to nature, we always feel our best when we are surrounded by it. We found a nice little cafe beside the falls as well. Coffee with a view would be an understatement here. What is very cool is that many of the natural pools here allow swimming. There are changing rooms as well, so you can switch into your bathing suits and get into the water for those amazing photos. So we've just finished exploring the waterfalls and it actually shouldn't take you more than two hours. Usually I'm not a big fan of waterfalls but these probably have been one of the best ones I've seen. The water is really beautiful and blue and it's also quite peaceful if you get here early. Yeah we definitely recommend getting here at about eight as soon as they open because within an hour or so there are just so many tourist groups and it really ruins the peacefulness of the waterfalls and being in the mountains. So definitely get here as early as you can. And then if you are coming to Lang Prabang, we'll definitely recommend that you put this on your list of things to see. It is really so stunning. And even though it is a bit of a drive out of the city, it's so worth it. Our adventure today wasn't over yet. As with time on our side, we wanted to explore a bit more of the countryside. First, we stopped for lunch at this cafe perched right on top of the Mekong. 
Throughout our entire travels through Lao, the food has never disappointed us, and this was no exception. Here we enjoyed a delicious traditional lunch. And just look at the view. On the way back to Lang Prabang town, every now and then we would make stops to look at the rural life beside the main road. We got to see farmers going about their day as well as a few ladies who were weaving some Lao dresses. Sabadi. We had such a great time exploring the Lao countryside and the waterfalls today. We hope you enjoyed it as well. Stay tuned and we'll be back with another travel story very soon.